Hey guys, Rough Cut Craft here. Today we're going to be sculpting a face from a piece of pine. I needed to quickly make a tool to begin with. Then I'm going to wedge out a segment of that pine log. Then using a fro, I'm going to cut out that heartwood to reduce cracking later on. Once that's done, I'm going to quickly even it up before mounting it and securing it in place. That way it doesn't wiggle around while we try to work. We're going to be using the Flex Cut Mallet Sculptor Set and also the Flex Cut Mallet Starter Set to rough out this face by the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started carving. All right, so I'm going to start with my 50 millimeter number three sweep fishtail gouge, and I'm going to start rounding off where that forehead is going to be. Then I start to make a wedge shaped mound in the wood. I want to remove that splintered material from around where the nose is going to be. Continuing to wedge that out. Now the shape of the head is going to be roughly the shape of an egg. So I start to undercut where the chin is going to be a little bit deeper. Whenever doing this, you want to cut perpendicular to the grain or you want to point cut that way that you don't splinter off the wood now I start to notice that my egg shape is a little bit too elongated so I cut down a little bit around where that forehead is going to be this is going to be about a one half size scale so then using the 90 degree V parting gouge at the very center I start to set out that brow line and the eye line then I start to wedge back more dramatically where the nose blends into the cheek. Basic rule of thumb is you want about 45 degree angle from the nose to the cheek line. You can use your thumb and a forefinger as a measurement tool. Be careful as you're doing this part. You don't want to undercut too much under that nose because the top lip is going to form a wedge shape that is going to blend into that nose. And you don't want the nose to sit off the face. The nose will sit about halfway on the face of the carving with the nostril sitting back on the profile of the face. Continuing again to clean out under that jawline. Now using that fishtail, I'm going to remove some of that bulk that I know is going to be in the way. Then we start to dig the eye sockets out. This carving is going to be of a male figure, so the eyebrow line is going to be a little bit more pronounced. That's just a general rule of thumb. Doesn't work 100% of the time. Then using that 90 degree V parting gouge, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that face is rounded out again. Now I'm starting to set in the side planes of the nose and then digging out around those eyes. The eyes are gonna be set back deep into the head. That rule doesn't work necessarily with every single ethnicity. Some ethnicities will have um, less pronounced eyebrow eye creases than will others. Again, tapering back. And really digging out a deep spot where that nose and that eye is going to meet. This figure is going to have a very pronounced brow line. Again, guys, be careful as you start to rough in these nostrils. You don't want to cut deep where the back of that nostril is yet. Because once you do that, you can't put the material back. And again, as you're cutting around that nose, be careful not to cut too deeply. 
because the nose is gonna sit halfway on the face, meaning the nostrils are gonna be visible on the profile of the face, and the upper lip is going to blend into the nose, mimicking the same wedge shape that the nose is gonna have. You don't wanna make it look like you have a flat lip and then slap a nose on the front of the face. It's gonna be one of the quickest things that other carvers, especially in competition, are gonna judge you on. Again, taking some more of that bulk off of that forehead. I use what's called a Riley method of drawing whenever I am forming one of these faces. That kind of helps keep me straight. I would encourage you to look at some YouTube videos of that. And I start to cut where that mouth is. Now you'll see the corners of the mouth are going to roughly line up right around where the pupil is. This is going to be an elderly figure, so we're going to have a smaller mouth. It's going to be a little bit sunken in. Again, getting that correct taper. Those more dramatic sweep tools are great for cutting out some of this material and helping you round back, then you can always go back with a flatter sweep gouge. Now, as I'm doing this, it's looking like I'm coring out that nostril. I am not yet. Coring out that nostril is one of the quickest ways to make a mistake because you're inevitably going to continue adjusting the nose. If you hollow out those nostrils, it will look cool for a moment, but then you will be unable to work with it later on. I'm actually to the point where I save coring out the nostrils to the very last. Your brain will fight against that because you'll want to go ahead and do that step because it adds so much to the figure. But I tend to adjust on the nose until I'm completely done. lining up the corner of those eyes with the corner of my mouth. Then I roughly cut in where those eyes are going to be. That is going to be removed later. I used a V-parting gouge just to help me line up that eye socket because the eyeball itself is going to be round sitting in that socket. All right, now looking at it from a different angle, you can see a little bit more in detail what I was talking about a minute ago. You can see how that top lip comes to a wedge and how it lines up with the center of the nose. And you can see how that nostril line is sitting back on the profile of the face. You can see the wedge shape of the face, the roundness of the eyeball, the deep brow line. And you can also see how little bitty adjustments will make a lot of difference, like on this chin as we cut in. Taking just a quarter of an inch can mean a difference in something looking real and something looking more like a caricature. You'll start to notice the planes of the face. That's another thing I would encourage you to research, planes of the face. Rick Casali has some great videos about that. Again, from another angle, as I get the one side of the face lined up, then I want to start making sure that the opposite side of the face matches it. It's at this point where it might help to turn it upside down and look at it. That's a suggestion from Alec Lacasse um, to make sure that you have symmetry. However, you might have a model that doesn't have a symmetrical face, like if you're working with a true model. Um, like my mouth is crooked, so it doesn't line up exactly right. And that's where you really have to be observant. Um, one thing that I've heard is that if you try to draw a face upside down, it'll help you be more observant in your drawing. 
So like we said, a quarter of an inch can make a huge difference on whether something is real or something is a caricature, but it can also make a huge difference on whether a likeness actually looks like a person and if it doesn't. So guys, I encourage you to try it for yourselves. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, consider looking into these flex cut tools. The price of that 150 millimeter fishtail gouge and some comparable brands is going to be about the price of the whole sculptor set from flex cut and they're great tools. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider following. I really appreciate you all and have a great day.